Welcome back guys for another episode of Mortal Realms Monday. Today we'll be painting the Celestar Ballista from issue 8 of Mortal Realms magazine. You can check out the video review for that issue in the cards up in the corner there. As usual the paint scheme for our Mortal Realms army is that of the Hammers of Sigma. So without further ado, let's get started. Right. First of all, we're going to remove our ballista from the base, assuming you haven't glued it down, uh, so that we can quickly get to the underside and start applying a base of Abaddon Black to all the black areas on the model. So let's go ahead and take some Abaddon Black and uh, apply some of this to our palette. And remember, it's better to thin the uh, paint down and apply three to four thin layers of paint rather than one thick layer of paint as it will give us a smoother cleaner finish uh, without showing any uh, brush marks or you know lumpy thick paint or anything like that. You don't want to over thin it but just a little bit of water is enough. So the areas you want to be painting black will be uh, all of this un area under here. Uh, this is why we've moved it from the model. If we had left it on the base, it would just be too difficult to get under. Uh, you'll also want to get the area down the side of the, the main barrel of the weapon here. Um, also, anywhere that is going to be silver. Um, along the top of the model here. And this area around this. Uh, you can go over the top of that. Uh, front sight there, the area around the sight will be silver, the sight itself will be black. Uh, also the same with the back here and around the sides. And then the legs and all of the under area, obviously staying away from the, uh, the sculpted area because that will be gold. And also the arms of the, uh, the bow itself and the front of the barrels. So if you'd like to uh, go ahead and get working on that and uh, we will be back in just a minute. Okay, so now that we've done all our black areas, uh, your model should look something like this. Well, I've put it back onto the base temporarily um, just so we can uh, do the next part. Now, if you were holding the miniature like this, uh, whilst it was off the base by the ends of the the arms then it should be fine but if like me you were holding it this way then you may find that some of the paint has worn off the the edge of the model so you just take some black once it's reapplied to the base you can just go back over any areas that you've rubbed off with your your fingers so next we're going to take some balthazar gold and again using two to three uh, thin layers we're just going to paint over all the gold areas so that will be the back of the shield here, the uh, the front armor plate or whatever you want to call it, the under part of the barrel here, the medallion, and also the small lion head just at the front here. Um, also we want to do the, uh, the legs, the top of the legs here, as well as the, um, the feet. sighting wheel I suppose you could call it at the uh, the side here and the ends of the the bow arms uh, obviously the tops as well uh, also this part around the front along the top all across the the front emblem there and uh, over the the sight piece so if you guys want to go ahead and do that we will be back in just a bit and welcome back so once we have all of the Balthazar gold applied next we're going to take some corn red and apply that just to the handle here and the same with the one on the other side so if you'd like to go ahead and just apply one or two thin layers of this and we will be back in just a second. 
Okay, so with the corn red applied, we are now going to take some iron breaker if like me you have run out of lead belcher. However, I do recommend lead belcher for this. But if you do have the iron breaker, just mix that in um, three parts iron breaker to one part black and that will give you a tone very similar to the, um, the lead belcher. And for this, we're just going to apply this to all the silver areas. So that will be the front barrels here and the front of this front sight um, and the back of it here as well. Also, the top parts along here. The side parts have some small detailing here and here and then along this edge here. Obviously this is on both sides and then if you want you can do the wheel piece under here. Um, just along here, I am going to uh, just give it a little bit of a, not quite a dry brush, but not trying to fully cover it, cover it either. So obviously under here and then the same on this side. So if you'd like to go ahead and paint those areas we will be back in a few minutes okay so now we have all the essential areas done it's now time to add some shades using a couple of washes for the silver areas that we've just done we're going to use some Nuln oil or Agrax earth, earth shade and for all the gold areas we are going to use Reichland flesh shade gloss now the reason we're going to use the gloss is it will keep a shiny um, film over the top of all the gold areas whereas if you use the regular uh, flesh shade then it will matte everything down so personally I prefer using the gloss when uh, going over metals so first of all we'll take the Nuln oil and I am running extremely low on this one and we're just going to apply this over all the uh, silver areas just giving it a quick dab make sure it, that you get quite a bit down into them recesses and then just a, a small glaze over the top and make sure you push it into them edges where it would have shadows Now this is quite a strong wash so we don't want to overdo it with this, just get it where we need it. Just at the front here, make sure we get it down into those engraved markings, that will make them stand out a little bit better. Right, so that's the non-oil done. Now the same with the Whiteland Flesh Shade, so all I do is just tip it up to get some in the, uh, the lip of the lid there. And this one does play up with staying up a bit. And now we're just going to throw this down into all these recesses, 
I don't need it to pull up too much, but we do want do want it in there. So we just go in and then pull it back out with our brush. And just sort of move it around those areas that we want it. Be sure to cover all the gold areas with it, even the flat surfaces. It will mostly wash off of them, but do make sure that it's there so we've got even coverage throughout the entire piece. You will want to give it about 15 to 20 minutes for this to dry, but do make sure it is fully dried before moving on with the next stage. So I will catch you in just a bit. And welcome back guys so now that we have our washes dried it's time to apply a dry brushing of retributor armor so we can get that there now for dry brushing all we want to do is take an old brush as you can see this one here the bristles have pulled apart there's you know not very good but it's perfect for this and you want to load the bristles with uh, plenty of paint and then on a clean paper towel take the majority of it off and then ever so gently just brush across all of the uh, the gold areas of the miniature just to pick off all those edges. Now you don't want to go too hard as you'll end up going into the, uh, the shaded areas that we've just done. But what we're trying to do here is pick up all of the edges and some of that surface as well, but leaving some of that under underpaint and uh, wash now what I find is just uh, go over a couple of times let it dry it won't take long at all and then go back over a second or third time to build it up to the uh, the color that we want so if you guys want to go ahead and do that and we will come back in just a bit. Okay, and next we will take some iron breaker and just the same as we did for the retributor armor, we are going to dry brush this over all of the silver areas. Now don't worry too much if you get this on the, the black areas as when we dry brush the uh, for the black areas that will cover it but if you can avoid it then that will be super so the same thing just a very small amount of the iron breaker on the brush wipe the majority of it off and then just gently pick off edges and the surface and if you want to get on with that I will catch you guys back in just a bit and finally we're going to do a dry brushing of eshin grey over all of our black areas so same thing wipe as much of the excess paint as we can and then just 
very carefully as we don't want to get this onto the gold or silver areas just pick off all of the black areas so the legs you come just under and you just pick off the edges there and obviously across the front here under this area of this leg you can see I had a bit too much on there so I'll just go back over and dry it off the top of here All I'm doing is just catching like this right on the edge so it's just enough to pull the paint off and highlight those edges like so. Only I'm doing it much faster than this. Basically, you just keep going until you've got the level of highlight that you are happy with. So I'll let you get on with yours and I will meet you back here in a few minutes. Okay, so next we're going to take some Dawnstone and we're going to mix this in about three to one with the uh, Asian grey just to darken it up slightly and then thin it down not too thin though we don't want this running now all we want to do is pull our brush flat through the paint you can see that there and all we're going to do is just drag it against some of these edges and remove some of the paint we don't want a lot of paint on there but all we want to do is just drag it around any of the edges where the light would pick up most And as you come away from a corner, gradually come away so that you're, it's fading towards an edge. But you don't want it against every edge sharp. You just want to pick off the majority of them. So again, from a corner, just before it hits the edge, and then the same this way, come to just away from the air, the corner there, and then down the side. And then the same on the top here. We're just gonna go for the center area along here, and around this curve. So essentially you're just picking off any extreme highlights, but try not to go too mad with it. But do make sure that you get it where there are corners or where three points or four points meet. So if you'd like to get on with yours, and I will catch you back in just a bit guys. 
Okay, so once that is done, we are now going to do the same thing for the gold areas using Stormhost Silver. So again, just apply it to your palette and then pull your brush back through, flattening the bristles down. And then for this, we want to just pick off a few random areas on the top where the light would be most reflective so the tops are some and points of some of these um, spiky bits as well as any areas that are very sort of sharp edged and anywhere that the uh, two or three points meet don't go too overboard with this. We are just looking to accent a few places. All right now with the front here, we just pick off some of the inner corners some of these sort of sharp edges of the scroll try to pick off this front line down here and then some of the line just some of these raised features sort of around some of the uh, the edge of the hairs around the eye some of the teeth on the bottom this is almost dry brushing there's not a lot of paint on my bristles here I'm just picking off some areas. So obviously this is a three point. So make sure that we got that. And then just some of the areas between here. And then the same with the legs, the detailing on the legs, just pick off some of the areas of this swirl pattern that's on it, just along the uh, the top there, on each of the legs, and then just a quick pull back across the toes on the uh, the claws here at the bottom. And then on, on the bolts, like so. So if you want to go ahead and just go around and pick off all those edges for each leg. And we'll come back in just a bit. Okay, and once that's done, we can now do the same with the Stormhost Silver for all of the silver areas. So again, just pick off some of these edges Don't need to go too crazy with it. And uh, we are almost there for this piece. If you want to do the, the engravings, being very careful, just pick off the, the tops of the bottom of anything so essentially you're doing the top areas even though it's the bottom of the letter and then obviously you've got this sharp edge here this one and if you want you can very carefully with this, just go around and pick off any sort of studs, bolts, rivets, anything like that. And just gently brush over the top of them. Like so, I had that showing there. like so yeah, 
and I can't quite see the ones under there so I don't want to push it and we will leave the gold ones gold just go over the front of the barrels here just off the tops and then the bottoms there right so next we're just going to take some screamer pink and with this we're just going to dry brush over the corn red that we put down earlier on the handle here Right, and that there is the ballista itself done. So uh, what you can do now is either remove the ballista carefully from the base and paint the base, or you can uh, go ahead and paint it with the ballista on, obviously being careful to go around the feet and not hit any of that. Um, but personally, I would say to remove the ballista and then paint everything in. Um, for a rough guide on how to paint the base, you can check out the uh, the other basing video that I did. I'll put a link in the corner there in the card. Um, and just using the same methods with the, the mud and the vines and everything, go ahead and paint that up. Obviously, with all the, uh, the, the details and stuff inside the box, paint those up in golds and silvers obviously you've got the replacement cartridges here would be in silvers uh, this compass type piece I would do in gold and then the same with these pieces here and there we go guys once you've uh, finished the the base and attach the the uh, the baluster this is what we should end up with so uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining me if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell for notifications of future uploads and I shall catch you all next time.